Welcome to our program on target. And as usual, as soon as we start this program, you have the authority, the power to pick up the telephone and give us a call. The number to call is 442-0175. And on this program, we encourage you to express your views. We don't like much rules, but we encourage people to be respectful to one another and to be tolerant. We have to be an inclusive people. We need to be an accommodating people. We need to respect one another. We may differ in opinion. Some people have a very good way of communicating and can put, put on things very simple and effective. Some people may beat around the bush a bit. So you could give us a call. The number to call is 442 0175. We're on Real FM 91.9, 91.5. You're on YouTube and Facebook. And we'd like you to share. Share our program. Share it on your page. Like and subscribe to Real FM. So as soon as the program comes on, you will be notified. You can always go back and look, take a look at it. And this is another beautiful day in some parts of the world. And in some parts of the world, you have war and tension. Russia and Ukraine. Israel and the Palestines and Hamas. And a new dimension has taken place. Iran sending more than 300 missiles and projectiles in Israel, attacking the mainland of Israel. I think Israel was assisted in helping to defend about 99% of them, as they say. United States of America, the Jordan, all of them shot down some of the missiles. The question is now what Israel do. Most countries in the world that support Israel is encouraging them to hold their hand and saying that the fact that the missiles did very little damage to you is already a victory. So hold your hand. They don't want a full-scale development of war in the Middle East. That's an interesting topic. A few weeks ago, a number of Grenadians was loud and clear condemning Israel. Since then, a couple hours have passed, and I've not heard them whether they support Iran attack on Israel or whether they're against. Iran is one of the countries in the world that does not recognize Israel's right to exist. They say the only place for the Jews is under the sea. That's a tall order. Some people asking for peace, but how do you make peace with a people who do not recognize your right to exist? I've said to some of my brothers in discussion that they must research the three famous no's. No recognition of Israel. No peace with Israel. No negotiation with Israel. And I think we in this part of the world here, some people hate the Jews and some people tolerate the Jews. Some people support the Muslims to kill the Jews. You can chime in and express your views and opinion. Although we far from far, but because of the, the world is considered a global village, what we say and what we do sometimes have political impact because everybody is fighting for the, 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 the opinion, world opinion. So this is a good time to stick. You have the issue in Haiti. We don't speak about it much. 
a number of Grenadians prefer not to speak about Haiti since our leader went to the United Nations and deceived the Haitians. He has shut his mouth on Haiti. Immediately, there was some negative reaction for some of the Haitians that was living in Grenada. Some of the contractors that was employing them decided to treat, start to treat them badly and not paying them promptly. And I put that squarely at the foot of Dick Mitchell for contributing to that. The Haitians are generally quiet because they're living in an alien land where our people are generally hostile towards them. The Grenada Prime Minister have agreed that um, I think effective, I, I don't know if it's for the end of this month or what, that people from the rest of the Caribbean can come to Grenada indefinitely. Before, it was for six months. Now you can come indefinitely. So you shouldn't be surprised if you see an influx of people in Grenada. I'm of one that believe we are too intolerant to immigrants. We go to Trinidad, United States, Jamaica, Frankfurt, in other people's country, and we expect them to be tolerant to us, but we're very intolerant to immigrants. So the population of Grenada have not risen in the last 78 years, with 110,000 people. Sometimes they say 100,000 people, 85,000 people. It all depends on the level of migration. So although our infrastructure has improved by leaps and bounds, our population has not increased. It's going to have serious consequences for the NIS, and it's going to have serious consequences for the pen government's pension. Because it means generally people are living longer. So say the statistics. And if your population is not increasing, and your elderly people are increasing, then who is going to take care of them? Who is going to pay NIS to compensate for them? NIS have already moved the age of retirement to 65 eventually and I think soon after that they're going to bring it to 75 70 or 75 they want as soon as you retire you're dead so they don't have to pay we have a level of hostility that creeping in our society and if we don't care for it's going to take us by surprise but it's there, it's creeping in. One of the factors that people think is good is the increase in the pension age by NIS. They increase the pension age and they increase the contribution. So what NIS hope is that the majority of people go dead before you get pension. However, NIS is supposed to be investing our money and they are not telling us whether on the returns on investment. This is things we have to pay attention to. We have another issue. The government of Grenada seems to be in a hurry to create a paperless society. And a lot of our people seems to ignore that. And so ask the government, why are are you in a hurry to create a paperless society? What would be the negative consequences in the short term? Because it will have negative consequences. In the long term, you will have a labor problem. Less people is required to achieve the work. But in the short term and the medium term, you are forcing our people to accept a system, a model that they are not educated on. You're pushing it on them. And that could result 
in negative financial consequences. People could lose their savings and their monies in the financial institution. It's easier for these people, whether elderly or not, who is not knowledgeable about the internet to be robbed. Even the institutions like Arisa, I understand Arisa lost millions of dollars. I don't know if they told the members how much money they lose. I was not satisfied with the information Arisa provided for the members. Some people say they have it on the internet. What percentage of Arisa members access the internet and could get that information? In addition to that, does Arisa tell us how much millions of dollars they lost? If they are losing money, it means that your shares in Arisa would reduce. The amount of money they have to distribute as shares would significantly reduce if they're losing money. Did Arisa pay the scammers? These are questions that are legitimate that you must ask. If you are a member of Arisa, did Arisa pay the scammers? And how much money they lost? Does Arisa initiate policy that a bank, like your account, become dormant? You in the credit union, and they tell you your account is dormant. Is this institution still operating in our interest? You have shares in Arisa. And if they make profit, you're supposed to get shares. But yet your account is dormant. What is going on? I know in the bank they do that. And the bank take out in your money, you know. And sometimes when you see the bank put several hundred persons on the newspaper asking about it, sometimes when you, when you go in the bank, 50 cents are in the account, you know. 50 cents a dollar because they take out money from you every month. Yes, caller, welcome. No, I didn't hear the, I didn't hear the say anything about how much money losing in Arisa, but they, they, they never, they, they never, they never call everybody together and say they're missing how much and this, how much is they are, they're losing. Yes, I, I understand that they lost millions of dollars. Not everybody, we have the phone we could use the phone properly to access what they need to access all right yes and there are sometimes you see people organizing party and function and you're getting message on your phone and ariza would have the phone numbers perhaps of a lot of his members but i don't think that method of via was used to inform members. I don't think any call was made for workers to go to the office to collect a fly sheet to say we are were experiencing some challenges and problems with our system. And if Arisa is paying the scammers, we ought to know. We are members of your organization. This is not a secret order for the executive and the managers. We ought to know. I, I don't know if Arisa still, if the um, members of the board has voted in or selected anymore. And you must start to ask question, who owns Arisa assets now? Yes, caller, welcome. Good afternoon, Mr. Pierre. Yes, my brother. And good afternoon to Untagged. Mr. Pierre, well, congrats on the Galaxy Equalizer. Listen to you Saturday it was on Untagged. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Pierre, we, we <laughs> I happened to listen to a press conference this morning, right? 
And that press conference consists of um, Minister David Andrew, Minister Andal, and Minister Lennox Andrew. And they were given a little synopsis of the, the memorandum of understandings that he signed in Cuba. Right? And missing from that, that particular press conference is was to um, tell us what. Mr. Tillisford. And well, the Prime Minister, as you know, is in Greece right now. And the questions that were asked to these, to these gentlemen, these bully gentlemen, and what they were saying is basically contrary to what they went to sign because you go to sign things in agriculture, aquatics and, and, and crossbreeding and, and, and fertilization and all these things. And the questions that were asked to these men, what are the benefits of doing that? They can't give, they can't give hmm. a direct answer. Like, for instance, the, the Minister of Agriculture, I'm sure if you had watched that interview, that press conference, he was asked about five different questions, and that question was sent to the technical officer. One question in particular, the journalist asked about the commission or the committee for the, the, the cannabis industry in Grenada. And she was basically saying that the first Minister of Agriculture had this board, had this committee, to set up and it was in full gear and it was quashed and she asked him now there's a second one what is going on with that he refused to answer that question as a minister of agriculture mm -hmm. so these men come to press conferences they are getting pertinent questions and they are not they're still not answering the questions so i beg to ask what are these men really doing to better the lives of the region instead of in, in other words the grandstanding the thing you know pictures they, they, they announce that first conference Sunday, they say 3.15, then they bring it back to, to 4 o'clock, they say 7 o'clock, then they bring it back. And quite notably, I realized that there wasn't a lot of the, 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 the pressing um, journalists like the Kalestra Faria, and then later on, Dr. Bob Axe, the same Minister of Agriculture, and he gives some long thing about he wasn't invited to the program, and, and all this kind of, you know, the kind of shade and mm -hmm. kind of run away from questions. These people are them sticking and disappear. The Prime Minister was here Sunday. You telling me that this gentleman could not have announced, even through his, his press secretary, that he's going to Greece today or yesterday? These people and them feel Grenadians are not in tune. Even I didn't know about this press conference this morning. Did you, Mr. Pitt? You heard about this press conference? No, no, no. I didn't hear about it at all. I, so, didn't, I didn't hear about it at all. The majority of Grenadians would not have known what is happening there. And then these press conferences I have been noticing for the last couple of weeks are not being aired on either GBN or what a national radio station that we can at least hear it on the station or see it on the TV. So people who who's not in tune with Facebook or YouTube will not know these things happening. Right? And when you have callers like people that call your program and, and talk and say that nonsense, these are the things that they look at. These are the facts that they look at. And lastly, Mr. Pierre, I looked at the program yesterday afternoon, <laughs> right? After six. And there were two individuals on that program. One was Mr. But this and another guy that says he's a journalist and claiming to be some person that knows everything about NMP and NDC and knows everything. And he made a statement, that journalist guy, wherever he's from or wherever he's living, and he was making a reference to Dr. Mitchell and leadership. And he made a reference to the last nine years. Oh, Dr. Mitchell wasn't challenged for leadership over the nine years or 10 years he was in office and anybody could challenge him on that and he's talking the truth. So if this idiot that he calls himself a journalist, know that any political party has an office that has a leader. Once that person is a sitting prime minister, the board political party's constitution states that you cannot challenge the leadership once the person is a, is a sitting prime minister. Something as simple as that, this, this guy don't know. And the host of that program, not knowing for his own self, will not correct that guy until the guy, brother, you're wrong. This guy even goes on to say that Dr. Mitchell lost the elections and most of the ministers lost the election because they was riding on dr mitchell back and he was a problem so if that is the case explain to me now what is happening with Dika mitchell prime minister Dika mitchell these people have a narrative and these particular talk shows and, and podcasters let me tell you all something likes and social media views is not ballot box votes on the Duff election mr pierre have a good color color one of the things yeah, that i'm hearing you one of the things that people have to understand that Dr. Mitchell 
is the most outstanding and successful politician in Grenada and the Commonwealth. One of the issues some people have is a, quest, a question of straight political jealousy. And they know that any team you have, the opposition will glad if you best batsman are your top bowler not in the game. And people have to understand. When, when Mr. <laughs> Pierre, the thing about this one is <laughs> Dr. Mitchell is not, he, he's not, he, he's not defending. He's the opposition. So <laughs> they have to get there. They have to get it. And if you're hearing things, like for instance, the minister, the, 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 the minister is in a, in, a, in a segment right now in Greece, our ocean conference, which is something that is supposed to be, in my view, for the minister of climate resilience and climate change and all these mm -hmm. things. Like you are seeing this guy is taking up, he's traveling. And to me, this is my opinion, he's traveling on the backs of grain and tax money to see the world, right? I don't know if it's jealousy, what jealousy Dr. Mitchell will have for this guy. Dr. Mitchell, I've seen it all. Dr. Mitchell was in office for how much years? You know, now you're hearing Jonathan Lacklet saying what's the effect that your representative or your, you know, these people are delusional and they feel no NAP supporters are done so and I'm stupid as you are, of course, I'm seeing. But there's something very alarming that I'm seeing is a trend when they come to press conferences, they are not answering questions. And when they do come to a press conference, they're not staying very long. And rather strange enough that the press secretary is here today. The, the prime minister's press secretary, she's here, and the prime minister is gone. So, brother, it leaves more question than answers. <laughs> you folks have a good day. Yes, I think we have to understand that the NDC policy, and I always say to people, I have a lot of soft spot for politicians. So I normally put a lot of emphasis on the policy of a political party. And the NDC policy that we learned after the one election was information is based upon need to know. They lied to the public. They told lies to their two favorite journalists. The journalists that Dick Mitchell projected, that is Kalistra and Dr. Bob, they lied to them because they gave them the impression Yes, caller, welcome. Yes, Mr. Pierre, good day. Yes, my brother. Yes, I, I reiterate. Uh, who who, who paying the Prime Minister? Because you say, if I, you say for productivity, you say also own something for productivity, and the Prime Minister always out of, out of this country. So I wonder who, who, who really paying him? That's that, that my question. Who really, who, who really paying him? Because there is no production there, every means you out. You can't see them to, 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 to do the people work. So if you can't do the people work, how, how come you collecting money? And my real something point is that the, the, the Brothers Bridge has uh, been since, since the Marian MP. That, so they, they, are, they are about four years behind the schedule. Because he, he had a collapse of a role in Mombile there and all this, all this thing come and happen there. See, you have a small enterprise in the area, so fine. And now they understand the... the Contractor leave and, and leave the work all up there and go and do the Bonnet Bridge. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand that at all. They don't struggle in here all these years past and that, that bridge can finish yet. And just maybe I don't know if you do want to show up to see, well, look, oh, we do have a bridge. They just rush, take the machine from the river and just go, go, go and start working more. There's not one engineer in Grenada. There are a lot of, there are several engineers in Grenada. So I ask me, question, how come that happen? How could you leave, leave a, a, a construction already way behind? Way behind time, he leave the, the, the construction side and, and then he hit two balls and to see that he's in more than But there is other construction, there is other men who could do, do, do about engineering. So I, I, don't feel, I don't feel that is right for what they do because we've been so far in the area for all these, these years for a bridge to thing. I don't know, you look at NMP, look at that, come back and finish, finish up that bridge, you know. Because they really, really, they have to put some basket and everything, and they just put a little piece of head. There are a lot of work to do in, in, in the Boras BC. They, they believe they're irritated in wall for the bridge, right? To support the bridge, they believe they're in wall. But they just remain there, and they supposed to dig and, and, and really keep the river up to now. We, we just see nothing going on. You hear the squad, the squad side of the They say the squad go up, go up in, live and go up into one walk in, in Bonnet. So I say, well, I don't understand that because they're way behind time already. So I don't know if just to get credit and say, look, we do, we do a bridge, you have to read the really, really, really budget. I don't know if it's about that, but that is not fair. That is not fair to, to the people of our brothers. Take care, Mr. Pierre. 
Well, the, the, the National Democratic Congress is a very unproductive government. They have not placed any emphasis on productivity. And what we could likely happen if they continue on that trend is the economy deteriorates, the economy going free fall. And it's not a question of money, it's a question of policy. And I say it is not a question of money because based upon the budgetary projections, they were collecting more money than they projected for. The returns from the CBI program was much, much more than they projected for. Yet, the economy starts to deteriorate and small business, the rural economy, is dropping. But it's a straight question of the policy of the NDC. The NDC is a group of vultures. See, people could research what is a vulture. I know the majority of people know. It's like a gigi that looking for the chicken for when it is not close to the mother or if the chicken is sick. The first thing the government did was to remove $150 from the elderly, disadvantaged children, and physically challenged people. Now, who does that? The NDC have a track record when they come in power to go after these people. Yes, scholar, welcome. Yes, yeah, Mr. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. You just the, you don't know it's a quality prime minister, man. You just the running your mouth and say, look, you only think you need that. We will never let our leader fall, you know. We go rally with him until the very end. Color, you, the worst thing you need, you know, they're talking about that. Color, you satisfy with the behavior of the Prime Minister? Color, are you satisfied with that vulture behavior of the Prime Minister? Color, you, sati you satisfy with the Prime Minister encouraging young people to use obscenity on the stage? Color, you satisfy with the Prime Minister calling people beggy beggy in Parliament? Color, you satisfy with the Prime Minister calling people classless? Color, you, you satisfy with the in, in the Senate when the minister was referring to an individual as a mad black, black woman? Color, are you satisfied with the cabinet minister calling people commoners? Color, if you satisfy with that, then I can't. But do you satisfy that Dick Mitchell Institute a policy of restorative justice? Color, you understand the impact of restorative justice? If these things is not challenged by the majority of people in Grenada, when a next government come in power, whether it's five years or 10 years or 15 years from now, and they introduce restorative justice and they continue with that policy. Call it what you expect. What you expect. Call it, I call on the lawyers in the country, the Bar Association. Do you agree with restorative justice? Call it, do you agree that the ministers should plunder the GDB bank? Ask the Prime Minister to defend that color next time you see Scholar. Ask him if he agree that. Next time you see Livingston, ask him if he agree that. Next time you see Glenn Noel, ask them if they agree with that. That ministers of government plunder in the GDB bank. None of these individuals would be able to get a loan of that magnitude in the commercial banks. The government set up a sham board to rubber stamp these individuals. Color, you agree with these things? Color, did you hear the cry of Shirley and Robinson? The 31 workers that was fired from the Grand Bar Estate. Color, did you agree with that? 
The workers from Montreal Estate who stayed quiet because they did not get the Christmas benefit. They prayed to go fire them. Caller, you agree with that? Yes, caller, welcome. Mr. Pierre. Yes. You know, some of us, if we children do wrong, we always say they right. And then the children end up in jail. You check it out? Mm -hmm. A big man seen wickedness and he come in and he talk in shopping. But you, right? you realize they can't defend it? Huh? They can't defend it? That means when your children doing wrong, you keep, you're telling them they're doing right? It's time for us to open our eyes. It's time for us to do when we see wrong, correct ourselves. So, what going on with this Grenada? This Grenada coming in like Haiti and them? We have to stop this foolishness and them. When they see things wrong, say that the thing, if the government doing right, nobody ought to beat them out about him, you know? Nobody ought to run them out on the government. If he not doing the right thing where he have to do, no, no the people vote him and put him, he like he, people put him there and he do business about nobody. All he does tell him is that he's doing what he wants. That like just it, you know, you don't care about if you, if you eat tomorrow, you know. That what going on with us? No, Mr. Pierre, it's time for us to stand up and, 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 and face the thing of the coffee, man. Time, man. Time. Mr. Pierre, have a blessing. Yes, thank you, Color. Uh, going back to the Color. Color, you agreed what was done to MNIB workers? And some of them don't even get paid yet. Color, what's about the workers from Karaku? 19 years, 18 years, 15 years working with government. The hatchet man fired them. Color, do you agree with that? What's up for the Imani workers that the government told they're going to make them permanent? Yes, Color, welcome. Mr. Pierre. Yes. The NIB workers, they're too thief. They have a right to stay home. They're thief over $15 million. The NIB. They have a right to go home and go get work. Color, you can say this thing. Color, you can come on radio. You, you shouldn't come on up. My apology to the MNIB workers. I apologize. You can't come on radio and say these workers thief. If the workers thief, the prime minister should call the police for them. The prime minister deceived these workers. He lied to the workers. The prime minister set up a board. Not a, it's a board. He did some consultation. We said it was a sham. And it was a sham. The Prime Minister deceived the board and the workers. Yes, caller, welcome. Mr. Pierre. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Pierre, Tol tolerance. Well, so listen are, listen, listen to these words. And, and you know why? To listen to these words. Caller, you know it's, why? Yeah, it's, it's good words. You, you know why, yeah. caller? Caller, imagine that if this government stay for 10 years and the next government that come, come with restorative justice. If right. you don't so tolerance, you we'll keep... Here. Yeah, go ahead. Moyokoi, old blackberry, piece of thing, expired corn beef, old man, smell a pee. These were things that were said by Kem George. What's about the church? Caller, you forget the church sucking the anus? This one was said to you. Of the anus of the NNP. Caller, this was said by Kem Jones. I said it because I have recorded. And the NDC crowned the Prince of Hate. Let me talk. Let me, let me, let me, let me, <laughs> let me talk. Mm -hmm. He going to Karakou and Tevin Andrews. Give him an award. Tevin Andrews, give this guy an award in Karakou. Ask Kem Jones why NMP threw him out. He didn't leave NMP. Ask him why. Ask him why he was thrown out. Not leave NMP. He was thrown out. Ask him what you do. You understand? If all you don't know, all these NEC supporters, the problem with all is that all they're not organizing all they to see the damn truth. Right? All they have a prime minister that increased minister's salary by 100% in less than two years. Right? All they have a prime minister that was told by some people that, oh, NMP ministers then was taking gas in the, in the police station with four and five vehicles. The police said, no, that is not true. Kalisha Faria tells the government that is not true. You know what he do? He still put $2,000 more on the salary. What is the audit? 
You people doesn't really understand what going on here. This this is not about about lying. This is about facts, right? When Kevin Andrews say he will not be present, no minister, even see president minister, same thing matters. You understand? He come last week when he's on a program, President Ali, President Ali Williams, President himself. Yesterday we see up in the models with a whole group of them. This is a cabinet. You understand? Yeah. This is not thing that we say. This is not thing that them will be saying. You understand? So if you don't know all these NEC fools, and this guy that come and say, but what? You got to go fire them and, and do their work. That is why Mr. Pierre, I will be on the ground and have no tolerance and none of them. Have a good afternoon. We, we, we have to be careful as a people because, um, Yes, caller, welcome. Good afternoon, Mr. Pierre. Yes, welcome. What about Charlie and Jill from Paradise? They send home since December month. Yes, yes, daughter. The caregiver. Yes. And why they have elder ones working? Yeah, and, and coach, I'm addressing me because I'm calling the radio. Coach, I'm keeping me and I'm going to go long good. Yeah, yeah. I'm not bothering. No, no. I'm not good. I'll take care. Yeah. You see, and that's why we have to be careful. Because I saw in, after the revolution, there was children that couldn't walk in their parents' house. During the revolution, they come in with a gun. And after 83, they couldn't walk in the house. I've seen a situation where a man couldn't squeak when his wife was going in man over. And after 1983, she couldn't enter the house. The gentleman from the north that when Maurice Bishop come up to have a caucus with his wife or his spouse, he had to stay on the step with his hand under his chin. I've seen these things go on. I've seen people spit on people and box them and mash up the vehicle after 1982. But the general public said, no, we cannot do that. We must forgive. Go in Grenville and ask Lava Lava what he was in the PRA. A number of them, I see them as vagrants now. Nobody helped them. Nobody assists them. They didn't, they didn't even get the pay for the month. Those that was in better position and who had family clout went to the United States and England and Frank Frankfurt and Germany. Some of them continued their education. But the ordinary man, he suffered badly. So I'm mindful of that. And that is why I cannot agree with Deaton. Restorative justice policy. That is why I ask constantly that the Ministry of Mobilization, MIT, should be disbanded. That ministry is set up for political mischief. When I speak about the castration of Broco, if you take issue with me, go in the courthouse and look in the archives. Statement was there. I sat down in the court and listened to the statement some people. When I speak about Fargo, you could go and find out the same school, the same school, where the parliamentary representative from Maribo sat on a bench with her sister and then take back the land away from her. And I beg Lennox Sanjo to come to a rescue. I know she went to lawyers, but she can't pay. That is why Dick Mitchell say, let the workers that lose their job go to lawyers, go to court. Deku knows that these people are the poor, are the poor. Yes, caller, welcome. Mr. Pitt, just a question. Um, we noticed that the Imani workers, they got an increase of $500, all of them. And at the end of February, they took back all the $500. But listening to the government, they said that those that are working for $700 should be getting the $500. Well, I was just talking to one of my daughters this morning, and she's telling me definitely there that they take back all the $500, so they're only getting 300 and some dollars fortnightly but that's only if that's correct because based on the law of what he was saying she's supposed to be receiving twelve hundred dollars but the those that work for seven hundred dollars they're still receiving the same amount of money and when they ask about it 
They say wherever they walk in, the people they have to pay them the difference. I was wondering if I leave that true, Mr. Pay. It's a you, crime. Mr. It's true, but it's a crime. For but you see, our union has sold out some workers. These workers are got got sold out. And that's what, and this is one of the reasons you have plenty crime in some societies. Cause a lot of things going on in greater here, you know. NIS, when somebody go to get a sick leave, they have to get a telephone so they could get their money. I don't know if NIS working as an agent for the cell phone company. You talking about the poor, the poor. There is an instance where in the video I had to get, I think, $160-$70 for his sick leave. And your phone is about six hundred dollars. You say it don't make sense buying it. Leave it for them. Color a lot of things is going on in this country that one day you're gonna boil up. When you hear in the small communities, some of the NDC hardliners making statements and say, let them starve. How are we gonna deal with that situation when the pendulum turn around? Yes, caller, welcome. Mr. Pierce. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Mr. Pierce, the Prime Minister came in in the island Sunday night. Monday morning he gone. And he put back Mr. Andy to act as Prime Minister. The, the Prime Minister said to the people that they in Karakou, go to the court. They could go to the court. And he, say, and he says about two or three persons that happened too. So you okay about the two or three persons. We have a committee or organization called the Integrity in Public Life. I haven't heard one case that the, pub, the Integrity in Public Life try yet. And I hear in every day that people have lost their work since when haven't got back their work. So if we estimate Mr. Mr. Deacon to stay in power for a year, for five years, what is going to happen? Where is the integrity in public life? Where is the complaint? Who else we could complain to? The unions seem to take a back seat. Who are we going to be able to complain to? I would like to follow that. Because the union seems to be on a back burner. Well, equal, to be very frank with you, the people who are most affected is not really members of the union. They might be paying agency fee, mm. but the union don't rec really recognize them. So, nom so yeah. normally, unions will, will defend these people. But this group of individuals are not defending them. They tend to support the National Democratic Congress. You have the teachers' union calling to fire NNP people that work in the government. Yeah. You see, Kola, what and, next, and next week, uh, the next two, two weeks, we'll be have, the unions will be going out and march again. Why the union will be marching for this time? Kola, the, the, the unions always get issued to march. For instance, if you listen to the teachers' union, they're happy, they're satisfied. They have the power to determine who are the auxiliary staff that comes in the school. So the government believes that the majority of principals support them, so they continue the political mischief on the ground to starve some of those NNPs. I say these things because I was in tongue during the revolution, and I saw some of the negative consequences, the bitterness and the hate that was exhibited by Grenada. They took target practice on Mikey Foot. They went around with a mic in Montreal and called out the people and said, come and hear what the revolution have in store for you. So if there is no institute to speak on behalf of the people that are hurting, what will happen? Call what, what, what call her, you in mm. tongue now. Mm. That is why Eric Gary came on the floor. But Eric Gary will come back? Call yeah. her, call mm. her. That is why you Uriah Buzz Butler Rose. Keith Mitchell led a political party for a number of years, and that is why Keith was so successful. 
he won, he was the only political leader that won election all the seats on three occasions. But yeah. the people deserve the government they have. The people say they want opposition. They say keep too old. They listen to the propaganda from the NDC. So now is a time for reflection, education, and for our people to know about the policies of the government. But is that time for, for reflection? But you reflecting on Peter Payne for Paul Paul. Yes, Paul? when these things happen, people get hot. And sometimes when people get hot, they get wise. So I don't know if in the next 10, 15 years, Imanis will accept um, the statement that NDC make it. But well, that time I won't be here. Well, you want to die quick. I might be around still. You, you, eh? Huh? Yeah, I ain't planning to go no way. Oh, so you go, I go in before you? Well, you, you, after all, I want to come and see you go. I want to come in your happy hour and all kind of thing. So you could go before me. No, no, you go take this one. Thank you, Carl. All right. All right. Yes, thank you. Yes, the number to call is 442-0175. This morning, a number of issues. There is not a dull moment with Deacon. We have selected a prime minister. We gamble. We got a fake. The prime minister of Grenada was sold as a man with deep pockets and contacts. I interpret that contact to mean that among the lawyers, he was real good. And everything the prime minister does convince me he's a fake. And we have to stand the consequences of our action. But we have to try to buffer the impact. Because we selected this vulture. The Prime Minister of Grenada attacks the elderly, the physically challenged, the disadvantaged children. He, his supporters decide to starve. The poor of the poor. Yes, caller, welcome. Yes, Mr. Pierre, how are you? Great, man. Mr. Pierre, when um, the Prime Minister is out and he's appointing um, a deputy, and the, and the, the Governor General is supposed to show in the person? Well, this government has been flaunting the law with impunity. You see the government, they had a... Um, a situation, I can't remember the exact words, where you're not supposed to have contract more than 15,000. And the government was given contract of 100,000 without passing the law. Right. So the government flung the law with impunity. So you don't respect the law. You hear the Prime Minister say they, they had power and they don't know how to use it? This is what I tell you all the time. Teachers, police officers, and lawyers are the most distant in this country. But we selected them. You see, the, the idea is we believe everybody that swallowed the grammar book and speak good English have good character. Of course. And That's what happened to us. Jacket bandit. We said the boy bright. So we believe because they're bright, they're going to seek our interest. We have to change that. That is why that is why he said uh, that is why you have gone amnesty. But that is a rude awakening for him. Yeah. Talking about bringing brain and what? Pull them through all the things. You want to use it properly. Don't go stupid around using it stupid so they, they hold you and, and lock it. Lock it properly. So when you hit the target, you hit the target. Yes. Have a good one. All right, my brother. So that is the challenge we have in Grenada. You know? The Prime Minister came into the country, a big entourage went to Cuba, and the Prime Minister off to Greece. And the Prime Minister is so arrogant, so disrespectful, rude, flaunts the law, that he feels he don't have to justify it to nobody. But the individuals who was touting around with a gallard around the neck, as if his accountability, transparency, and good governance, they shut them out. They shut them out. They can't speak. 
And even those who try to challenge us on the run. I can't even find Dan Lee in the rum shop. He ain't coming again. Because who could defend these things? But we must think about the impact. Because anytime you have a government that goes after the poor of the poor, then that is a bad government. Yes, scholar, welcome. Yes, scholar, welcome. We lost that color. I tell you that the, the, the prime minister are going Greece, right? What he go and do? He don't have people to do it. Why when he select the people in the ministry? Why he don't give them a chance to do their work? Why he always do their work for them? That's a question I really want to know. So what I like, I like the prime minister to just say, let everybody go and seek control the government. Because I find that was the old for. And, I'm, and I didn't really know if we had a jet blue prime minister. I really want to know if we have a jet blue prime minister. Yes, and I think the prime minister, maybe a long time, he, you'll get ready to fall on the galvanized, so he gone in Greece. But um, this government is like a vulture. They squander in our resources. They flung the law with impunity and they raid in GDB Bank. I understand more than 20 heavyweight NDC individuals have application in front GDB board. The government set up a rubber stamp board. Just as the integrity commission is a rubber stamp. Some of the members we understand obtain gifts in excess of 30,000 US. Then they have not said one word and they have not retired the gift to the Integrity Commission. Yes, caller, welcome. We lost that caller? Yes. But the, 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 this is sad. The rest of the Caribbean must be laughing at us now. Yes, caller, welcome. Do you agree with what is going on, Carla? Yes. Carla, yes. you are, Carla, yes. Carla, yes. Carla, yes. you agree with the fine of the yes. thirty? Yes. Yes. Well, you you agree with it, but we don't agree. So you agree with those things. We don't think it is right. Government promise the, the Imani workers. What happened to them was so sad and pathetic. The government promised to increase the pay. The government claimed publicly that they increased the pay. And that is not true. The government reduced some of the money they get. Now, how a government could do that? Now, when I tell you these people are vultures, you're asking me why. That is why. Why would a government do that? And you're doing these things to people in the lower income group. You can't do that to union members. The union will take you on. So you bribe the union. What you did, in my opinion, is tantamount to a bribery. You gave them money that the court say you did not have to give them. But you say you give them for good relationship. And you Settle the issues with them. So they, decide, they, de they decided to turn a blind eye on the cry of their brothers. But the union have to understand. Anytime you call in the International Monetary Fund, workers are affected. During the last encounter with the International Monetary Fund, the government workers didn't lose income. But they made sacrifice. And the union should keep that in mind. So after the NDC wrecked this economy as usual, somebody have to come and fix it. And the workers have to pay the price. We like a recurring decimal. You put the NDC to wreck the economy. The LNP, they go and fix it. You bring back the NDC, they wreck the economy. 
The NNP go and fix it. You bring back the NDC. What in God's name you expect? And this group of individuals, I believe, is the worst group that passed. And I, I will always encourage people to ask questions. Somebody known powerhouses in this country, ask them. When you meet a lawyer, if you have an encounter with a lawyer, if your mother is a lawyer, your father is a lawyer, ask them if they agree with restorative justice. If your brother is a teacher or in management, etc., ask them if they agree with government ministers taking money from GDB Bank. Ask them. That is one of the best ways you could do. Anytime I corner them on the road, I ask them. You know. So they tend to run away from me. If I bounce them up in the rum shop, I can't find Danley. Anytime I find Danley in the rum shop, I ask him. My brother Willie, he ain't talking to me. And brother Ray don't want to see me. Come my way. Because I normally will ask. Are you satisfied with what is done to GDB Bank? And this is what we have to do. We have to continue. This country belongs to us. You don't want this country economy to go in free fall. The government policy could cause serious fracture on the ground, bitterness and hate. I don't agree with calling people classless. I don't agree with the term the government used, beggy, beggy, commoners, needy and greedy, lunatics and idiot, mad black woman. This is the language of the hierarchy of the National Democratic Congress. This is not inclusive language. This is not a language that encourages unity after 50 years. I still want to know who is the third party that directing our foreign affairs. It's important to us. They are the ones that must have Dick Monarara summoning him here and summoning him there. And it seems that he has no choice, but he must go. So we continue to ask these questions. We encourage the children from in secondary school, those of you in from three, from four, from five, by that age, you should be conscious and aware of what is going on in Grenada and think about the economic and social impact. And we want to thank you for being with us today and all those who call, those who try and didn't get you. You don't have to agree with us every time, but we want to thank you and we highly appreciate your participation. Thank you very much. <laughs>